The Old Testament is a lot like the time capsules that we've been talking about. A record of a former day that the Lord has preserved in the Bible for us today. And just like any other time capsule, when we see what's inside, we're going to find a lot of great and exciting discoveries. A good place to start is to see how the book is organized. Get a better feel for how this time capsule is put together. So if you will, please turn with me to the front of your Bible, to your table of contents. Look at the size of this book. Hey, we're talking 1,200 pages here. No way I'm going to read all this. Huh, the Old Testament is like a time capsule. Sounds kind of fun. Mom said that this would be my hardest year in seminary. Nobody understands the Old Testament. You get out of seminary just what you put into it. I don't know a lot about the Old Testament, but I'm going to give it my best shot this year. I always wanted to study the Old Testament. I'll bet this year is going to be all right. The books on this page contain a collection of histories, revelations, poetry, laws, and other things. Things which can really help us. For those of us who really make the effort, there are a lot of great discoveries and experiences if we'll just liken the situations and the people of the Old Testament to our day. One of the things that we're going to find in the Old Testament are a lot of stories many of which you and I are already familiar with. For example, the story of Noah and the ark. Let's go ahead and take a look at that one. It's in Genesis chapter 6. Julie, will you begin reading that for us, please, in verse number 13. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood, room shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth, to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. You know, this story is thousands of years old. And yet it's my feeling that the Lord has provided us with arcs of today, opportunities for you and me to escape the flood of evil that we have to face. Another important part of the Old Testament are the prophecies. As we study them carefully, we're going to find that a lot of them have to do with the last days. Let's look at one of those on page 1135 in your Bible. This is by the prophet Joel. Margaret, will you read that for us, please? Verses 28 through 31. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and I will shew wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. Don't be too surprised if you find some things in the Old Testament that you usually don't find in Scripture. For example, in the book of 1 Kings, we read about the great construction of Solomon's temple. And the length is three score cubits, and the breadth thereof is 20 cubits, and the height thereof 30 cubits. So Solomon built the house and finished it. Stories, prophecies, building plans, they're all part of the Old Testament. What I'd like to do now is hand out to you some more references. Take a few minutes and read through those. I think it'll give you a better picture of exactly what the Old Testament has to offer. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war. 
and go round about the city once. Take thou unto thee Aaron, thy brother, and his sons with him, from among the children of Israel, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office, even Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar, Aaron's sons. The office of a priest in the Aaronic priesthood and bestow upon you the rites pertaining to this office. Alan, we charge you to be faithful in fulfilling your duties, and we promise you that you will feel the influence And he laid his hands upon him and gave him a charge, as the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses. Let's see, Daniel, chapter 6. Darius makes Daniel the first of his presidents. Daniel worships the Lord in defiance of a decree of Darius. He is cast into the den of lions. His faith saves him, and Darius decrees that all people are to revere the God of Daniel. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom an hundred and twenty princes, and over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first. Then, this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes. Huh. Preferred. Because an excellent spirit was in him. Then, the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. Alan, yeah, give me that apron. Now, how does that look? Are you serious? Hey, you deserve it. I don't know what to say. Don't say anything, Alan. Let's just go to work. All right. How he can promote somebody so young is beyond me. Well, it may not be as easy for this kid as he thinks. Oh, sorry, Alan. Clumsy me. I say let's get him now. Wait, let him hang himself. Even though Lopez won't let us sell this old stuff. I remember reading in the employee handbook he can't even give it away. Once we show that to Lopez, old Alan will be history. Yeah, I can explain. There's I no just... need to explain. Now, you've I... been caught red-handed in direct violation of store policy. I know, but I was just going to... I'm sorry, Alan. You know, I'll bet it's quite a change from manager of the produce department to... Slave of the night crew. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys. Sorry. <laughs> Knock it off. Knock it off. All right. <laughs> Let us read. Local store owner honored by homeless shelter? Mr. Julio Lopez shares store produce with those in need. Well, I had no idea. <laughs> it's quite an honor. 
And Alan was behind the whole thing. He's been giving away old produce each week to those at the shelter and giving the store the credit the whole time. Welcome to the night crew. Oops, clumsy me. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no manner of hurt was found upon him, because he believed in his God. And the king commanded, and they brought those men which had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions. And offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I shall tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and went into the place of which God had told him. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him and said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, for now I know that thou fearest God. The last scriptural reference you read dealt with Abraham and Isaac. Like many things in the Old Testament, it helps point us toward the Savior and better understand His atonement. You'll see the Savior this year in the Old Testament, and you'll come to know Him better than ever before. Like that. I, I read tentatively, it's dialogue. I can't go more.